This is Eternal Blade, and welcome to part 9 of the kitchen tutorial. So, um, in this part, we are going to model the chairs that go to the uh, island, as well as maybe start putting in some um, lights or something, or maybe we'll start with the textures, I haven't decided yet. And we're going to build a few more objects to place in our scene, and maybe fix up some of the old ones that I didn't really like. And as well, we're going to build a little floor mat or something. So I guess we can start off with chairs. Um, they look like this. So basically, I guess scoops, kind of. And then four legs. So we'll start off with a box. And we'll just build it, say, right on here. Like this. And OK. And let's make that, call it um, 50 by 40. Oops, 40, not 10. And the height's probably around 2 centimeters. Convert to an editable poly. And then let's take and add a turbo smooth modifier to it right away. Give it two iterations, should be good. So select all the outside edges here. Oops. And let's um, extrude them on the local normal. Just a bit. Okay. And actually, I don't know if I want to do it this way. Oh well, it'll probably still work, so. Um, let's select these four vertices here. Actually, let's just isolate the selection. So, there we go. Select uh, these four vertices. And let's drag them up. And then select these four and leave them as they are. Let's just see what kind of a result that gives us. So closer. So next, let's select these two vertices here. Kind of drag it back. And then select these four and scale them out a bit. Okay. And for these top two, just bring them slightly in. Next, let's select uh, this line here and give it a big chamfer. Like that. See how it's getting us. Okay, it's not bad. So next, let's select this line here and chamfer it. Oops, sorry, chamfer it. again. Next let's give this a bit of a chamfer on the top. So two chamfer and give it just a tad. No. Let's say about one centimeter. Nope, bad idea. So don't do that. And actually increase turbo smoothing to four. And this really isn't bad. Um, let's go into the left hand viewport here. What is this? Oops, cancel. Some odd thing here. Oh well, whatever. Um, let's select. All right. If that ever happens, we get the circular selection box. Just press Q until this turns into a square. So select these and just drag them up a bit more. Okay. And that 
looks pretty good. Yeah, that's not a bad seat at all. So we're gonna use that, I wanna say. And let's see. Select ring and then connect. Give it one connect and just see what it does. So that's even better, it'll harden the edge off a bit. Alright, next let's add some or exit isolation mode first. And drag it down into place. Oops. So about here I'd say. And let's scale it in just a bit. Alright, looks nice. Um, so next let's add the legs. So let's go into line and go into the front viewport maybe. Yeah, that should work. And first off, hide the uh, big one, the big uh, walls. And just kind of draw a leg that comes down. And then convert to editable spline. Go to the vertice mode. I just want to make sure. Okay, so it's not even hitting the floor yet. So bring this down until it hits. Make it a bezier corner. All right. And bezier. Actually, just bezier. Okay. And that should be good. So enable in viewport and enable in renderer. And increase the thickness a bit. And let's just bring this back to line up with our seat. Okay, go to the vertex mode. And just bring that in a bit. That looks good. Uh, next, let's um, press F3, and you can turn off the enable and viewport for a second. I'm actually going to delete this point, I think, if I can. There we go. Because it was kind of breaking up the shape a bit. So there we go. Now we have a nice straight line. And it looks good. Now you can go into your camera view with save frames and just check the size. So the bottoms are obviously skinnier here. So let's let's see what does that do? No, that won't do it. So we need to convert this to an editable poly. And select the bottom ones here soft selection, use it, and scale everything down on the, let's see what we want, the X, Y axis. This will kind of do a tapering effect. So now you can see it's tapered. And go into polygons here. Turn off, use, use soft selection. Select the bottom most polygon and select these two, delete. Now select the border here Come on. and then um, cap it and extrude this polygon ever so slightly. So extrude, extrude. Where are you? There it is. Okay, not going to work quite the way I planned, so extrude. By just a bit. Okay. And then grow. Delete, or not delete, but deselect. Extrude on the local normal. Twice. Okay, and you can bring it down just a tad. 
And then on the top polygon here, simply delete it. And add a <coughs> turbo smooth to it. And lastly, let's um, rotate these just so they're somewhat flat. Alright, there we go. Next, select one and affect pivot only. And let's align it to that. If we rotate this, oops, make sure you press A for angle snap and you rotate. 90 degrees and make three copies. Uh, no, undo that. Let's move this one a bit closer in. Back to it on the line. Well, hmm. Pivot is going everywhere, so we're just going to manually do this, I guess. So effect pivot only and rotate, or put it right there. Okay, shift drag or shift copy, I guess. Three times, and there we go. That's looking a bit better. Maybe one more time. We're going to just bring it out a little bit more. I put it only, bring it to the center line, and rotate it. I'm just trying to match it up with the picture as best I can. So that looks pretty good. So we'll we'll take that for now, and then select all those things. Press W, and move them over here. Oops, sorry. Uh, shift drag them over. And the chairs are now done. Next, let's add a uh, small rug, I guess. So you can see it here. It's not really, I think it's some type of plasticky, squishy thing. But uh, we'll still add it nonetheless. So simply add a box like this. And then convert to editable poly. And let's see here. It extends to probably about, well, there maybe. I don't know how far past the fridge it goes, so we're going to assume it goes to here. And then probably it goes to the uh, side of the sink. So that's not bad. Okay. Next, select your ed your polygon, I guess here, and give select the edges and chamfer them. All right. Give them a decent chamfer with five edges, and select the actual edges themselves, go to loop, and then ring, and then chamfer, and that'll round off the corners. Alright, and let's, um, it's kind of thick, so, I know these mats are really thick, the ones I'm thinking of at least, so we'll make it like that. I think there's actually more than one of these in the scene, so they're kind of like um, fused together almost. Or not fused, but they're next to each other. So one of them ends about here. And then let's just affect pivot only, centered object, and shift drag another one right about here. Copy. And let's just extend this one over here. 
All right. And let's see here. Move it a bit closer. All right, there we go. Um, let's add, just take one of these plates that we made, shift drag it, copy, and drag it up. We can delete these two teapots now. And bring the plate over, and down, rotate it. It's kind of going to be like a display plate almost. And just sink it until it is resting nicely. Copy it over. Okay, press R. Shrink it again. And do the same thing. Right now we've got some stuff to look at up there. And over here, let's see, we can copy. Oh, that's probably good for now. Don't want to over complicate things. So we have all of these done. Um, we could make a table over here, but I don't really think there's a need to. Not yet. That might be in the next part when I say do a, I don't know, a living room or something. Or not the next part, but the next tutorial. Uh, so let's end this part here. Well, actually, let me let me check everything once more because um, the next part will be the texturing. I'm thinking. So you can let's actually change, fix the oven a bit. Um, isolate selection because there's actually a lot you can add to this scene. You can add all sorts of more vases or a toaster or you know really whatever you want, but this will give you the well more than a basic idea. So I think you should be good with um, everything you learn from this. Alright, now we don't need that, so that's good. And you won't even really see it more than that, so X isolation mode. And actually, let's select this polygon here, grow it, press W, and move it down. Okay, there we go. Alright, uh, that is a big oven door, or a big um, viewing hole, so let's make it just a bit smaller. There we go. better. And actually I'm going to, let's see, select these things and then um, move them to the sides so that there's space for a LED display or whatever, or a display for the, um, oops, for the oven temperature. I'm going to quickly make that. So go to box and just line it up like so. Okay. Perspective Z and decrease the height quite a bit. Okay. Convert to an editable poly. Press 4. Select the front and the back. And then we're going to want to inset them just a little bit. Okay, and then bridge. Now go into the four vertices on the sides here. And drag them back here. Okay, and lastly, let's select this edge here, loop, and give it a small chamfer. make a plane right here. OK. 
Okay, move it out a bit. And then convert it to an editable poly. And just scale it in. Or move it in so it doesn't interfere with anything. some place for our touch screen interface to you know warm the oven up and whatnot. I'm gonna say move it down just a bit. Alright. Um I think the oven is a bit I don't know if it's a bit small or what. So let's unhide all and then take a look here. Okay, so the oven needs to be extended back a bit. So press 1, F3, and select all of its vertices here. And just scale it like so. Okay, there we go. I think everything else should be aligned. Alright, so that's not bad. And chairs, now, the reason, I remember before I mentioned that this may be a 3D image, I think I'm almost now assured that it is because of one thing. There are no power outlets anywhere. Usually there's like one on the wall. I mean, there obviously could be one over here with the coffee machine but there's usually one here too and I'm not seeing any I think that means this is a 3D image it's just one of those things um, I don't know if we'll add them but in my bathroom tutorial there's a small section on how to do one takes five minutes but once we get to the final render if it doesn't look really good or realistic enough we can add those but for now I'm gonna say that we are done with the modeling part oh, actually we're not quite done yet let's do one more thing. We need to close off this wall here. So if there would be an eating area here, and maybe some chairs to go outside or a balcony. I'm just going to quickly um, scale it, make a scale thing. Just so I can position all the objects. So let's say there is a thing here with Actually, no, the eating area wouldn't be here. They have an island. So let's just say there was like a couch. Maybe. And a TV. And then there's a big rug. And perhaps this would be open. So. And there'd be a small table probably in here. So, this should actually be closer, and the TV would probably be closer too, which means there would have to be a wall right here. So let's um, select all the edges, <coughs> and uh, connect with only one segment and slide it let's say to about here <coughs> okay and then select this edge and then this edge and bridge alright and you can straighten that up just from the left view I guess and just Select all these polygons here, R, and scale them. And then move them back to where they were. Okay. And I would imagine there is a door right here. There usually is. So we're going to, let's see, select these edges here. And these edges 
shift drag them. Actually, let's take this one and shift drag it too. Just to make a basic cutout of a door. Okay, select so like this and this, and then bridge. Alright, and then this would lead somewhere else in the house, I guess. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Um, maybe like that. Okay. Um, select the edge. I'm just trying to get this so the reflections or the all the lighting and stuff will look as close to possible. So there we go. Now we have something going off and we can select the border here and cap it. Okay. So we have some huge windows over here with maybe sliding doors or something. And then let's see, this would be I don't know what this would be. There might be a hallway here. Or maybe kitchen living room. I don't know. Something could be over here, but for now, I think we're good if we just cap that. So, that'll basically be it for the modeling. Let's do a couple more things here. So select this edge, loop, and this edge, loop. And then this edge. Let's see. One of these edges is vertical. There we go. Loop. Nope, don't loop. I'm trying to um, give it some chamfers. Now, I didn't really make this to be chamferable. But uh, it should still work. Just give the light something to bounce off of. Okay, I think that's all the edges we need. Oh, no, there's one. That's all the edges we can see at least, so let's uh, chamfer. And we'll just give it a small chamfer. Alright, there we go. Um, so you've completed the modeling phase of this. Um, Next, we will go into texturing. Actually, there might be a little more modeling involved, but I'll do it later. It's for these windows. I might put some glass in here if I want, or maybe some type of picture on the outside, but we'll get to that in the texturing phase. So I'm glad you made it here. Um, hopefully you'll join me for the texturing portions that are going to come soon, and I will see you then.